and increase their numbers, and I will put a sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, and when my sanctuary is among them forever. I just read to you from Ezekiel 37, 25, Amen. 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 Thank you for allowing us to see another day, Lord. Yes. Lord, a day that wasn't promised to us, oh Lord. But Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, oh Lord, who died on the cross so that we might have eternal life, oh Lord. Lord, we just thank you for who you are, Lord, for what you're doing, oh Lord. Lord, because we know that the breath inside of us, Lord, is enough, Lord, just keep doing your will, oh Father God. Father God, we just don't know what we do without you, Father God. And Father God, we just ask it right now that you just touch every believer in this world today, oh Lord. Because there's so much evil going on, oh Lord. Lord, you know already, Lord. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But Lord, I'm just asking, we as your children, we want to say, Lord, just to help us and continue to look over us. Put your shield of protection around us, oh Lord. Lord, because we can't do it alone, Lord. We need you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Lord, we praying right now, Lord, that just, you touch our children, Lord. For the world got so many pedophiles and things that are going on in their lives. Then, Lord, we know we need to try to raise them in a way that's pleasing to you. And we ask it right now, Lord, that you help us, oh Lord. Help us to be the godly men and women that you intended for us to be, oh Lord. And Lord, help us to stand bold in your word and in everything that we do, oh Lord. Lord, in every situation and everything that comes before us, we put it in your hands first, oh Lord. And wait on you to give us the guidance on what to do, oh Lord. And then and only then, oh Lord, will we be able to know what your will is and how you're working our lives, oh Lord. Lord, let our living be pleasing to you, oh Lord. Lord, let us be the husbands that we need to be to our wives, Lord. Yeah. Lord, help us to bring unity in our homes right now, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, most of all, as it always has been, Lord, we know you come back to return to us, oh Lord. But the problem is we need to return to you, oh Lord. Help us to do it in a mighty, mighty way, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you this day, oh Lord. We thank every father in the house today, oh Lord. Lord, look up with them and just keep them under your will, oh Lord. Help us, oh Lord. We can't do it without you, Lord. And Lord, then I pray for the sick and shut in, oh Lord. That you may put your, your healing protection around them, oh Lord. From the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, oh Lord. Lord, I say a special prayer right now to be in will, oh Lord. Be with them and help them, oh Lord. Lead and guide them. But most of all, too, Lord, let someone know that their relationship with you with you is what they need to have, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you. And we look forward to being with you one day. In the precious and God name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. This is your servant's prayer. Amen.
Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Amen. Amen. You know, may come first and the mothers get old. The first opportunities and dads come the next month. We get what's left. <laughs> but I can say it today. It's a good Father's Day. Thanks to my wife and my father's day today. All right. All right. <laughs> and I got another gift for my granddaughters. And she uh, <coughs> today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, so I'm just thankful. I got a lot to be thankful for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Father, to come to me. Just as long as I know how. But yet thank you for, for everything that you're doing in my life, Father. With all the things that's going on today, it's just a blessing to have you to be present in my life. And I thank you. Thank you for bringing us from sin to the blood. And Father, I've seen what you do in the past. I see what you do in the now. And I'm just so looking forward for you being in my presence in the future. And Father, as I stand before your people, yes. Father, stand with me while I stand representing your name. Amen. Amen. For a few minutes this morning, I, I want to talk to you about reminders. Reminders. And would you please stand if if you're willing or able to? It's coming from Numbers fifteen thirty seven and forty one. Numbers. Numbers. Beginning of the Bible. Okay. Go over about three books. Numbers 15. I can wait. Numbers 15. 37 through 41. When you have it, say amen. Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corner of their garments throughout their generation and to put a cord of blue on the tassels of each corner. And it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments. And remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them. Right. Not to follow after your own heart Come on. Come on now. and your own eyes, which you are inclined to go after. So you shall remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. All right, all right. I am the Lord your God right. who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord, All right. your God. Christ Christ you may be seated. Oh, man. Uh, there are some things I got to remember. 
A tassel is a decorative piece of clothes that hangs. Then in the ancient world, tassels were worn by nobles and other high class people. Uh -huh. But in Israel, they are to be worn by everyone as a mark of their status as the chosen people. Blue is used in the tabernacle of curtains. Okay. And in the priest vestments. All right. Exodus 26, 31, and 28, and 31. So the blue thread reminded the Israelites that they were a kingdom of priests and our boy, holy nation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exodus 19:6. Right. This meant that they had to remember and do all my commandments. Yeah. Numbers 15:40. Right. They also had to avoid the mistakes of the spies falling after their own hearts. Have you ever forgotten something? Uh -oh, uh -oh. Traditionally, we are driven absent-minded and forgiveness to the absent-minded professor. Uh -oh. What you say? The truth of the matter is that forgiveness is an experience with which we all are familiar with. Even preachers forget. Yeah. Yes, sir. One young pastor was talking with an old minister about the challenges that he would face in the ministry. One challenge that especially fascinated the young pastor was wedding ceremonies. He listened very carefully as the old minister outlined each steps that he should take. And he listened carefully to the old minister. Uh -huh. But in conclusion, the wise advisor suggested, if you ever forget what you're saying just quotes scripture. It's always appropriate at a way. Well, shortly after, the young pastor had the opportunity to test his newly acquired knowledge. When a young couple requested that he do that ceremony. Okay. Everything went according to plan until he got to the point of service where the young pastor pronounced them husband and wife. But at that point, his mind went blank. He couldn't remember what next to say. All right. Certainly the advice of the old pastor came to him. Quote scripture. What came to mind in which he dutifully quoted was, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. We often complain about bad memories. Yeah. However, we could not exist for a single day without this God-given ability to forget. Uh -huh. To have the experience accumulated pain of all our previous days would be overwhelming. 
bears the intensity of all our past failures and our past faults, trials, and tribulations would be more than we could ever bear. Our ability to forget, therefore, is one of the blessings of God gives us of life. Like some blessings, it is a mixed one. For the ability to forget also creates some problems. But there are some things that we should forget or we need to forget. But then on the other hand, there are ideals and lessons and teaching me that we need to remember. That's where our forgetfulness creates problems for us. It is the negative side of forgetfulness that God addresses in this text. God had originally blessed the Hebrew people and had invited them into a special covenant of relationship with him. Uh -huh. He would be their God and they would be his people. Okay. Now on his side, he, be, he promised continuous protection. Okay. Now on their side, he demanded obedience to the stipulation which he had carefully outlined for them in the Ten Commandments. God knows however that they would not they would easily forget these laws. Even in the beginning when God gave those laws and commandments he knew that the people couldn't keep them because he's all knowing God but we had to have something to govern us so God knows exactly what we need it's just that all the time we don't accept it all day Now on his side, God knew however that he would even forget these laws. For he's an all knowing God. Yes, he is. So he ordered Moses to put tassels on their rules. Uh -huh. And blue cords around the tassels so that they shall remember to do all my commandments. That is in verse 40. The tassels were to be reminders of the love of God. For them and the demand of God had put upon them. When Jesus left his disciples, he knew that they too would soon forget his offer of grace and his call to discipleship. Therefore, he too gave them reminders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have been reminded from the beginning of time. God remembers reminders to his creation. Genesis 9, 13, 16. These reminders are to be before us as we come before the Lord's table yes. to share in his special meal. The bread and wine, like the tassel on the road of the Hebrews, are to remind us of our Savior. Jesus told the disciples that often as they partake of the Lord's Supper, they do this in remembrance of him. What do the elements of the Lord separate remind us of? Just a couple of things, and 
I'll take my seat. First, the life of Jesus. The bread and wine represented the body and the blood of Jesus remind us first of all of his life. A little boy came to dinner table only to be told by his dad, go wash your hands. There might be some germs on him. As a little boy headed to the bathroom to wash his hands, he mumbled. Germs and Jesus. Jesus and germs. That's all we hear about around his house. And you can't even see either one of them. Because we don't see Jesus in flesh, it's easy to forget about it. And, and the claims that he have wow. on our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These elements of the Lord's Supper serve as reminders that he was a real person who lived a real life yeah, yeah. in a real place mm -hmm. right. at a real time right. in history. You see, the Bible is filled, is filled with stories and events. Yeah. And some of them will only happen once. They remind us of his life. Yeah. Yeah. But the symbolism goes even, even deeper. Yeah. As we partake of the wine and bread. We are symbolizing the fact that Jesus, who once lived on earth, now lives in us. The truth was expressed by Jesus in the closing hours of his physical death. If anyone loves me, Jesus said, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our goal with him. John 14 and 23. The truth was explained by Paul in his letter to the Galatian church. I have been crucified with Christ. Paul said, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. No matter, no matter where you come from, where you've been, or what you have done, when God calls you and you accept his calling, he sets you apart. All right. And what is given to you is not from man, oh, but through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm right. I'm gonna bring that in. Which is given by his grace. Oh, and we all know the only place we can get grace. Now, this, that is eventually the outcome of the life of Christ, which these communion events symbolize. Now, second or lastly, the love of Jesus. The bread and the wine reminds of, of his love. Jesus did not just live on earth, 
but he also died. And the Bible proclaims that he died for us. We can all understand the statement in John's Gospel. Greater love has no one than this. Then one lay down his life for his friend. John 15 and 3. Jesus' love went even deeper than that. It causes him to lay down his life even for his enemies. But in the day of our casual Christianity, we need to be constantly reminded of the costliness of Jesus' love. A request was made to a preacher when he was visiting and preaching a revival. The request was to visit a man who had been in valor for many years. All right. As he entered the man's house, he expected to find a depressed man who lived under the room of his handicap. But instead, he found a man to be vibrant and full of life. After a long visit, the preacher asked the man, don't you ever get discouraged having to lay here day after day, week after week, month after month? Yes, the man replied, I do get discouraged. Whenever discouragement is saying upon me, the devil comes in walks over to my bed and whisper in my ear, does God really love you? Let you suffer like this? And he said, whenever that happens, the man continues, I just grab old Satan by the neck Drag him over to the foot of the cross. And I make him look at Jesus dying for our sins. And then I ask him, doesn't he love me? Here before us, are symbols of the body and the blood of Christ. The blood of which was shed for us. A sin that was paid by no one no other than Christ because none of us was worthy to pay that price because he was part of the problem. I'm just thankful for Christ that yeah. laid out his life so that we may live and have eternal life. Yes, yeah. 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 that's right. Now I will take my seat. But these are reminders of his love. is a day that like a day that we will never see again. And 
if you are here uh, under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a good day. And if you are here and you need prayer, we are here. And we will pray for you. they come is always tomorrow. So while you still can feel, see, hear, take the opportunity to come to Christ. There are so many people in the world now that have even had the opportunity to even hear the word of God. There's still over 1,500 places that haven't even heard the word. There's over 300 more Bibles that have not been written in their languages. So we are blessed to have the opportunity. To have God in our lives. If you, if you can hear me, if you can just hear the sound of my voice, you have already taken the first step. I know sometimes. Uh, devil has his way of doing and saying things to us. That's why we have to make sure we have our full arm on because we cannot defeat Satan on our own. So if you're here today, please come forward and just accept it. You may be feeling something that you don't really understand. And that's the Holy Spirit. Because as God, when he went to Calvary, said, if you lift me, I will draw all men to me. Not some men, all men. And me to me, me to me and women. I will give up my life, but in three days I will rise again with all power in heaven and earth. So don't waste the opportunity. God has already paid the price. All you have to do is say, God, please forgive me. Come into my life. My Savior. I believe if you say that short prayer, that you will be saved. Amen.
Pastor T, my sisters and brothers in Christ. This morning, we have Sister Joanne Pruitt, who's coming for prayer. And we have Sister Latonya Pruitt, who's coming for a support of her sister and a statement. Amen. Of the 
the world, God. We're trying to get it thrown left to right, God. We're ready to stand firm, God, in you, Lord. Oh, God, we need you, God. We come telling you, we come in finger right now, God. We can't do it without you, God. Oh, God, we give you the glory, God. We thank you, God. Bless each and every person, God. Bless Joey, God. God, continue to just love on her, God. Continue to wrap your arms around her. And in the midnight hour, God, when she can't get her sisters on the phone, God. Hallelujah, God. When she can't call her mama, God. When her father's not close, God. Let her know that you are there, God. Let her know that you are there, God. Let her know, God. Let her know, let her know, God. And we give you the glory right now, God. Bless her children in your name, God. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
Y'all come on over and, 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 and enjoy and celebrate with the old man. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you, brother. Right. Amen. Amen. Give it all praise to God, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us give God a hand clap of praise for the message of God. Time we up to our offertory period. As I should prepare themselves, you prepare your hearts to yield. That was a beautiful message, Reverend Hunter. We thank you for the reminders. The reminders around us every day. Yeah. Every day. That this life is fading away. Every day. Which 
enslaved people in the state of Texas finally received the news that we were free. We're going to celebrate anyway. June 21st is the first day of summer. Congratulations to Pastor Pastor uh, John Robinson. We're going to pray with him and for him, and we are excited to have him. Amen. Prayer Wednesday, day and evening. Okay, still doing day. This is our third Wednesday, the 21st, so there will be day service at 11 and 7 p.m. We will not have Bible study, as this is the first third uh, Wednesday night that we will be doing prayer only. So Pastor Arjun will select members to pray for a specific theme, and anyone who would like to participate will be invited to pray. Prayer requests will also be accepted via Facebook Live. So please pray for that. Also, Wednesday night services are available for you to view on YouTube. For those members who are not on Facebook, Wednesday night services have been uploaded to the YouTube link. The YouTube link is YouTube at GEPC 2110. That's YouTube at GEPC 2110. Our known second shutting members, Sister Vera Kelly, Sister Cornette Webb, uh, Deacon Fillmore, Fillmore Peterson, Sister Gloria Anderson, Sister Darlene D. Corny, Brother Norman Jernigans, Sister Fanny George. Sister Zella Young, Sister Gloria Butler, Sister Brenda Lewis, Sister Annie Lee, Deacon Jerry Tinwell, Brother W.T. White, who is the father of Sister Angela Hudson and Tanya Woods, Deacon Homer Rosebud, Sister Julia Robinson, Brother and Sister Gilbert Bass, Sister Brenda LeJay, Sister Nettie Chance, okay, there it is, and then Brother Fillmore Peterson, who is back in the hospital. Happy birthday this week, June 21st, we have Patrick Jones, and then we have an anniversary, finally, for the month of June. Please stand. Brother, Brother Tyree and, uh, and Sandra Jennings, June 23rd, and we're going to I'm going to call y'all. 
nobody. They don't forget nobody. And I, I just, uh, I just want to take this opportunity to, to. Reverend Jackson. Yes. Yeah. Um, we mentioned the, our newest graduate sister, um, Heavenly. She hasn't been here in a long time, and she didn't stand up when we called her name. I think she should stand up when she did. <laughs>
Y'all be good. Amen. Amen. 